Hi everyone. In this video, let's learn about Lightwing. For those who are new, Lightwing is an ESP32 based programmable DIY drone. It is ready to fly right out of the box. All you have to do is add a battery, power it on and control it using a mobile application. But the interesting part is it can be controlled using Python. Yes, you can write a small script to control the drone and even use Arduino IDE to write the entire drone flight control firmware from scratch. Apart from that, you can also add other sensors and new features to the drone thanks to the GPIO pins available on board. So to put it short, think of Lightwing as a development board, but for drones. You can buy Lightwing either as a fully assembled drone like this one, or you can get it as a DIY kit. The purchase links for both the versions is available at the link in the description. If you have purchased the DIY kit, make sure to check out this video to learn how to assemble your drone before you continue with this video. Once your drone is assembled, this is how it will look. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of the hardware components or the circuit diagram because all of that is well documented on the wiki page. You can check it out and the link for that is also in the description. So depending on from where you purchase your drone, you might either get it with a battery or without a battery. If you don't have a battery, the onboard battery connector on Lightwing is JST XH 2.5. If you can find a battery with that connector, it's well and good. You can just directly plug it in like it is shown over here and it will be a perfect fit. But for some reason, if you don't find a battery with that connector, you can use any drone batteries with the MX 2.0 or 2.5 connectors which will look like this. These are commonly available all over the world and you should be easily able to find it. And to connect it to your drone, just apply some force and it will go in and stay fixed. Now this is not a perfect fit but you can use it without any problems. Now, once you connected the battery to the drone, make sure it is tightly secured in place. You can either use a zip tag like we have used over here or even double side tape or you can use a Velcro like it is shown over here in the slots. You can use a Velcro tape so that it's easy for you to remove and connect the battery whenever needed. So once your battery is connected, you can just place the drone on the table and power it on using the switch over here. As soon as you power on, you will see the red LED on and over here. It's going to do some sequence and spin the motors once so that you can know that all the motors are working perfectly. When this green LED is blinking, it means your MPU 6050 is calibrated and it is ready for connection and takeoff. Now, before we connect our drone to the mobile phone, make sure the antenna is facing you. That way you'll be easily able to move the drone forward or backward. So before you start flying, always make sure the antenna is facing you. Now I have an Android application over here. You can control Lightwing either through an Android application or an iPhone application. I will demonstrate both of that in the video. The link to download the mobile app can also be found at the description description of this video. Now, once the Lightning is turned on, you can go into the Wi-Fi settings of your phone and you'll be able to see the Lightning SSID. Click on it and it should be connected. Before you launch the app, also make sure your data is off. Otherwise, you will not be able to communicate with Lightning. So now that is done, we can go to the ESP drone app. I have already installed it on this phone. You can install it using the link in the description. Make sure the yaw is turned off so that it's easy to fly. You can enable it later once you get comfortable. And then click on this button to show that it is getting connected. Once it's connected, you will see the blue color link LED on your drone constantly blinking, indicating that there are data packets being transferred between your drone and the mobile app. So as soon as you verify the blue LED is blinking, you can slightly give throttle to see that you're able to control the drone. Now let me show you how you can fly it.
Now, in the video, you might have noticed that as soon as we take off, the drone is not holding its position and it is drifting either in the roll or the pitch axis, which is completely normal for this drone because it doesn't have any height hold or position hold sensors yet. You can obviously uh, add those as an upgrade, but right now it doesn't have position hold or a height hold by default when you purchase it. So what you can do is on your Android app, if you click on settings under flight control, settings you will find something called roll trim and pitch trim so if your drone is drifting a lot on the roll axis to the left side you can bring this roll trim to the right side slightly so you can decrease increase it by uh, 0.01 or 0.02 to see how your drone responds and that way you can actually compensate for that error in drift using the roll trim and pitch trim so that when you take off the drone it doesn't drift much apart from that you have a lot other options on your android application you can check them out similarly you can also fly the drone using an iphone on iPhone, the application is called ESP Drone. Now, on the iPhone, the app might look all plain and blank, but on the left side, if you click, you will be able to give the thrust. And on the right side, whenever you click, you can adjust the pitch and the roll axis. Now, let me also show you how you can fly it using the iPhone. Once you have finished flying your drone, you can just connect your Type-C charger to Lightwing and it will start charging automatically. Once the charge is full, you can see the full LED next to it, which is a blue LED turning on as soon as the charge is completed. It will take around 15 minutes to charge an 800mAh battery and the flight time for an 800mAh battery is around 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, now you know how to fly the drone. But Lightwing is not just about flying. You can actually build on top of it. The default firmware of Lightwing is based on ESP drone and Crazy Fly. This means you can use CF Live and CF Client to control your Lightwing. I'm going to show exactly how to do that. But full disclaimer here, these drones are not a replacement for Crazy Fly and it will not support all the functionalities that a Crazy Fly drone will support. But you can do the bare minimum stuff like taking off, moving in a particular direction, achieving height hold, etc. So now let's learn how to use CF Client and CF Live. The complete documentation to get this done can be found on our website. So basically you have to install CF Live and CF Client on your computer. And to do that, I'm using PyCharm. I have created a virtual environment called a Lightwing as a new project. And I'm going to use the terminal here to install CF Client and CF Live. So installing is pretty easy. Just follow the documentation. And over here, you will see the commands to install the CF Live and CF Client. Just clone into this particular repository and then use cd crazyfy clients python to enter this directory and then run pip3 install e to install both the cf client as well as the cf live. So once it's installed on your virtual environment, you can just write cf client and it will automatically launch it for you. Before we launch CF client, make sure to turn on the drone and your laptop has to be connected to the drone's Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to connect to Lightwing over here. And the password to connect to Lightwing is 12345678. And now you can see that our CF client is launched. Again here, I'm just going to click on connect. You don't have to change anything. Just click on connect. And as soon as you connect, you will be able to see the current gyroscope values over here. As you can see, it is slightly tilted, which doesn't matter. You can correct them with roll trim and pitch trim. So no drone is going to show it exactly in the normal level. You can correct it using the roll trim and pitch trim. And as you move the drone, you can see that this uh, GUI is also showing the current position of your drone. So apart from this, on your CF client, you can fly your drone in different modes. The normal mode 
mode is what we have tried already. If we have soldered a TOF sensor to the back, you will also see other modes getting enabled. Right now, there is no TOF sensor on the back side, so we are not seeing any other modes. We'll get to that later. In the normal drone, you can also do lock client. You can also check plotter and plot uh, different values to see how uh, all these graphs are getting updated to understand the drone dynamics and whatnot. Apart from that, you can also see the current battery voltage over here. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you quickly how you can add a joystick to your CF client and control your drone using it. I have used an Xbox joystick controller like this one. You can use an Xbox, PS4 or any other joystick of your choice. As you can see, it's already connected to my laptop using Bluetooth. And over here in CF client, I'm going to do input device and configure device mapping. As you can see, it has already detected my Xbox Series X controller. I'm going to load a profile and click on configure and then I will load the Xbox 360 mode and then click on load. As soon as I click on load, you can move the joystick and see which is controlling what and you can actually detect each button and change it however you want. Once you're done, just click on save and then go to input settings again and make sure your device is selected and the input map is the same one which you have set earlier. Once that is done, you can click on connect and start flying your drone. I will show it in a separate video. I won't be able to fly it since the drone is on table. Before I do that, let me quickly show you the height hold feature on CF client as well. Like I mentioned earlier, this drone over here does not have any TOF sensor soldered to it. The pad is empty. But for demonstration purpose, I have another drone over here which has the TOF sensor soldered here. So I'm going to use this drone now. Turn it on and then go into my Wi-Fi settings and connect to the new drone. Now that I am connected, I am going to click on connect in the CF client and once it's connected in the flight mode, you can see under normal, I am getting a new option for height hold and position hold. So this is because the firmware automatically detects the sensor and it gives us option for height hold and position hold. So for position hold, you would also have to solder the optical flow sensor but uh, we haven't tested that yet so for now you can use height hold by just soldering the sensor let me quickly pair this controller again and i will show you how you can use height hold on this drone real quickly we'll make a separate tutorial on how to use height hold on the cf client as well as on the cf live <laughs> Now let me disconnect from here and CF client doesn't run very well on your Mac. You're going to see this error every now and then. So try it on a Windows if that is an option. So CF client is just to visualize data and use some already enabled features. But if you want to build using Lightwing, the CF Live is the way to go. So all the instructions on how to use CF Live can again be found in this documentation. Let me quickly run few sample scripts. So this is a sample Python code written using a CF Live called Hello Lightwing. So we're going to connect to a drone on this specific drone URI, which is a unique identification number. For Lightwing, this is going to remain the same. And then we are printing some statements on our console here for our reference. And then we're going to link to our drone and arm the drone using 000. And then we're going to set the roll pitch, yaw and thrust. The thrust values a very minimum value 1000. Just going to spin the motors in the lowest speed possible because the value ranges from 1000 to 6000. And then we are going to send these values using the commander set point and then sleep for one second and then make it zero again. So let's test this code real quick. I'm going to run this code. And our Lightwing drone is already connected. I'm going to run this drone. So as you can see, it says uh, 
sending zero set point to unlock safety, starting motors at minimum speed, and we were able to see the motors rotate at a minimum speed, and then it stopped automatically. So apart from that, let me quickly show you another code. This is called the CF Live Ground Station. Again, we'll make a separate tutorial, but just to quickly show you what's possible, we're going to read all the critical parameters of the drone and control the motor speed in real time. So we're going to read the PWM values that's going to the drone. We're going to read the pitch roll and your that is being measured by the drone and the PID command pitch. So the command pitch is the output which is given to the motor for the pitch roll and yaw. We have separate command pitches, command roll and command yaw. We'll be reading all that. Let me quickly run this code as well just to give you an idea of what is possible. And yeah, here it is. It's already launched. Uh, let's not monitor all the parameters. I will disable these so that it's easy to understand. Let's just monitor the pitch, roll and yaw and click on start. As you can see, we are seeing the pitch, roll and yaw. If I tilt the drone, you can see the roll is getting changed. If I go on the pitch axis, you can see that the pitch is getting changed. So all these values are being read real time. Even yaw can be changed like this. So this is how your pitch, roll and yaw changes. But you can see all the other parameters as well. And you also have a thrust button. Let me just disable these and turn on the PWM for the motors. Right now the motors are not spinning, so everything is zero. But let me just hold the drone in position and turn on the thrust. And you can see that the motor starts spinning. And one motor is not spinning because the yaw is not adjusted. So the PID is already kicking in. Let me increase the speed. As you can see, it's trying to adjust the yaw. And if I click on pass, it stops. So this way you can give a thrust, see how your PWM signals are responding, how your roll, your pitch is calculated and how the command pitch and command roll is also controlling the PWM signals that are being sent to the drone. So if you're building advanced applications, this is going to be helpful. Apart from that, you can also use command lines like this to control the motors or even hover it in a particular height. Now you can do a lot more than just reading sensor values or spinning the motors. You can actually use the CF Live to build interesting projects. In fact, we have built a gesture control drone and you can also check out the video over here if you're interested. So with that gesture control drone, we are reading gestures from our hand and using CF Live to send those values to our drone. You can be creative and build a lot of more interesting interesting drone projects with this. But this is not all. If you want to dig deep into the world of drones, you can actually write the complete flight controller firmware for Lightwing using Arduino. So since this is ESP32, you can just use that onboard Type-C connector to connect it to your laptop and write your own Arduino code to fly your drone. In fact, we are writing a bare minimum code using which you can fly Lightwing with the Arduino IDE. More details on that along with tutorials will be available on Circuit Digest very soon. That's it guys for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching it and learned the basics of Lightwing. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.